Welcome everybody to the Museum of Native American History. It is always our honor and especially our delight to people bring people together at the museum. Uh, for some of you that might be new to visiting us, um, we are an art museum that was created by my fabulous mentor, Mr. David Bogle. And we tell the story of the first people and we highlight the diversity in art of the first people from all the Americas, from South America to Alaska and on to the Antilles. But that's not enough. We also braid time. And this is part of the braid, where we highlight indigenous people that are trailblazing, making history today. And our watchword for our cultural celebration is called indigenuity. And that's playing the seeds of traditional knowledge. And that we hope that we have those grow to the next generation, that they're using their talent to create sustainable things for our planet, to move forward, and do things that are good for all creation. Tonight, it is my honor to bring a family member of the museum here again, Mr. Jay Benham, but before I do that, um, what I love about this, this is indigenuity, where you take a traditional art form and you adapt it to the artist's mind and delight and bring it into today's history. Uh, we will be joined by actress, musician, this is my shameless advertising, Ms. Gabby Nagel, award-winning Eastern Band Cherokee musician and flute player. So we're gonna do two performances. They're short, there will be Q&A. We do have microphones, so I hope you'll have questions and Jay will be here for Q&A and to tell you a little bit more. With that, my honor, Mr. Jay Benham. Um. Thank you, Charlotte. Many, many years ago, really a long time ago, the Kiowas worshipped the god of the sun, Dokai. They didn't worship the sun, they worshipped the god of the sun. Well, Dokai, the deity, took a young girl, young Kiowa girl, as his bride. And so he took his wife up into what we would call heaven, and Tokai um, told her, when you're up here, look around you. You can have anything you want, anything you want. Oh, except for this for forbidden yam. And we sometimes call that yam the um, prairie turnip. He said you can have anything, but don't dig for that yam. That's forbidden. So she abided by what he said. Soon they had a son. Pai Tai Li. Pai Tai Li. Son boy. The son of God. So one day, Dokai was out hunting. And uh, she said, oh, here's my chance. I'm going to go and dig for that yam because I'm getting hungry for that. I want to cook it up. And so she did. She ran out and started digging. As she did, she broke through the surface. And she looked down. She saw her family, her mother, her father, her siblings, aunts and uncles and cousins. And she grew homesick. Hmm. She said, I've got to devise a plan. I want to go back home. So her plan was to collect all the extra rope, tie it together, making a longer rope so she could descend from heaven to earth to be with her family. And so she did exactly that. And so, um, again, Dokai goes out hunting, and she says, my chance has come. She ties off the rope. She and Poi Tai Li descend. And unfortunately, not enough rope. She's there at the end. She's got, oh, she's got a ways to go. In the meantime, Dokai returns from the hunting trip. Where's my wife? He looks down and sees her hanging at the end of the rope with Sun Boy. He grows angry and he takes this wheel a wheel, used for gaming, used for toys, but a wheel indeed, takes it and throws it 
and strikes her and kills her instantly, she and Sun Boy fall to the surface of the earth. Of course, she's dead, but Tai Li survives, only to be discovered by Grandmother Spider. And she takes him, and she raises him, teaches him how to survive, how to shoot a bow and arrow, what to, how to hunt, what to hunt for. In other words, survival skills. She tells him, here's a toy for you to play with. Again, a wheel, a little gaming wheel. You can play with it, roll it around, do whatever you want to with it, but uh, don't throw it in the air. Of course, what do you tell a toddler, a boy, not to do? And he does it. He throws it in the air and immediately comes crashing down like a bolt of lightning, striking him here in the head, making two, not twins, but two sun boys. Now Grandmother Spider has to raise two boys, feed two boys, train two boys, and clothe these two boys. But she knows they have special powers. After all, she knows they come from, from God to earth. She knows they have special powers. She gets word that these great giant bears, four of them, mythical bears, are killing and devouring the Kiowa people. And she knows these boys have the powers to destroy them. And she tells them, take your lances, not bows and arrows, but a lance, and go and kill the bears. Kill these giant, humongous, mythical bears and bring me the ears of the bears to prove that you made a kill. And so they did exactly that. They went out, the two boys, and killed those four bears and brought the ears back. She says, you know, as a reward for your bravery and for your power that you have, I'm going to teach you how to make paint. So she did. She soaked the sinew and showed, showed them what plants to get to make certain colors, how to use certain rocks to get certain colors. And she gave them each a shield. On one, she instructed them, you will paint a uh, lightning boat. On the other shield, you'll, the other one, you'll paint a bear. And so we have this story in the Kiowa tradition, why art is so important to the Kiowas from the very beginning, because the art comes from the deity. It comes from God. And so that's where we have that story. Kiowas don't make, uh, well, landscapes or, or um, still lives. They don't paint flowers. They paint from that experience. When the early warriors went out and had a good fight, they came back and they painted on hides, and they painted that scene where they were in battle. Later in the mid-1800s, um, 1860, new material was introduced to the Plains Indians for their art, this ledger art. And the reason they call it ledger art is because that was the recycled material that they received, recycled ledger paper. Other things were introduced with crayon, watercolor, pens, colored pencils. And so 1860s on, new material was introduced. Now, the Kiowa raided into Texas a lot, but they only fought the United States government in the Red River War. After that war, they were confined to a reservation. Subject matter changes. Then they started to do domestic scenes courtship, marriage ceremonies, dances, uh, home life. That progressed into the Kiowa Five, who are internationally famous, and then it progressed also into uh, the Bay Cone School of Art, the first time Native Americans were doing easel and studio art. So things changed, still keeping the tradition of kind of the ledger art tradition. And then it progressed into um, the Phoenix Indian School, and then also into the Institute of American Indian Art. And a lot of those guys that we painted with, we knew, uh, Sherman Chattelson, uh, Parker Boyettel, 
a TC Cannon, they all kept that same style of art. And, it, and it's in, in us today. And so in my art, I've always had a, a painting and a short story that may go along with it. Candace Green had a book about uh, uh, Silverhorn, a famous uh, Kiowa ledger artist. She said she categorized ledger art into three categories, the narrative, the story, and then also something of a spiritual nature. And then also a record keeping, which were uh, calendars. Um, I want to show you very quickly um, a, calen a calendar from a calendar from our, our family. A lot of tribes uh, kept uh, calendars. Our our family kept a um, a family calendar, and you'll see these are great examples of um, of ledger art starting back in about 1856 and going to 1920, I think. As it progresses, you'll see that the ledger art changes, it becomes more realistic as a lot of the young people go off to uh, boarding school and, and, and are taught. Anyway, this is available for you to examine uh, at your leisure after, after the program. Great example of, of ledger art. My art tells that same story, the narrative, the spiritual, and hopefully record keeping. So that's, that's what we're about in this. I wanna take ledger art as, as I've taken it from a narrative, a written story, a painting, and bringing it to a newer plateau, a newer plateau where we had that ledger art in an installation, taking the, taking the painting, staging it, and with the, with a narration. So uh, with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, a reservation debutante. Finally, a few minutes to myself to see how I look without being watched. I look at myself in the mirror from this angle and that. I twist and stretch to see myself from all the directions everyone else will see me. I'm almost ready for the Indian fair. I don't want to act like I'm there just to impress. Not while my mom, aunts, and cousins are watching and not later either when I ride down Main Street on the float. I wonder what those white girls think when they look at themselves in the mirror, their stylish clothes, the way they pose for pictures like in the glossy magazine ads, their shameless self-confidence. How will I look to the guys that always look at those girls? How will I look to those girls when they see me? Some act like they're jealous. Maybe, maybe not. But I live in town now. I have nice things to wear. Mom and Dad finally got the BI jobs they wanted. It's good. Yeah, I want to be pretty in my own way. But I'm not going to act like some celebrity. Not like them, no. Uh, now, uh, we're going to entertain some um, questions, and I'll make up some answers. <laughs> Kim. Hi, Hi. 
how do you come up with the stories for this performance? Thank you for asking that. Um, what I do, I relate back to um, my childhood, what I saw as, as, as a child. I didn't see uh, buffalo hunters. I didn't see um, people going to war. I saw my grandfather um, being, being a successful farmer, building a house. I saw my aunts and uncles going off to school, um, becoming uh, administrators, teachers, whatever. And so those stories that I went through, and I, I try to recapture that. The story I told you about, uh, Pai Tai Li, that, those are the, we used to sit on the, lay on the front porch at night in Oklahoma on a pallet, and we would have, or somebody, would, an adult would be telling these old stories. And of course, we didn't listen that closely. Listen close enough to get, to remember the, some of the stories. But those are the things I want to create, that era, from where my grandfather and people of his era went from being nomadic, even going to war with the government and making that transition to what, what the government calls good citizens. But those are the stories I, I, want, I, I want to come up with. Those stories and the stories I, I, I experienced. Uh, and does that answer your question? <laughs> so that's a part of that narration. And that's part of that, hopefully, try to keep that record of what we want to keep in the future for us. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have a question for our model, and could you express how you feel as you're acting this out and what goes through your mind? Um, it's honestly really nerve-wracking, because I want to be the very best for Jay Bigham and represent the Kiowa tribe as best as I can. And having this honor to be up here and representing this and help come this, help come all of this alive is really a great honor and it's it's definitely a weight on your shoulders knowing that's with you but it's it's the most fun thing that you could do at the same time so it's that's <laughs> and, and the narration uh you know the narration how, how does that reflect to you um you know i i am a performer and getting ready to go on stage and stuff um, just those few minutes that you have to yourself before you go on stage is probably some of the most nerve-wracking things that you can feel. And knowing that this girl is about to be on a float and go through this downtown and be stared at by all of these people, uh, there's, there's no way that she's not shaking in her shoes. And I just, I feel like I really reflect this story and it really, it just, it has a lot of meaning to me. <laughs> this is our aerobic exercise for the night. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for uh, what you've presented to us today. I, I was wondering if you could share the meaning of the story that you shared, the first story. Um, what what does that mean? I I'm presuming that the characters represent something. Are you talking about the story of uh, Tokai? Yes. Vine Deloria, a noted author, says that, that the Native American god committed deicide. So when the American Indian's god was needed, he wasn't there, was he? So everything pretty much fell apart. And so that story means to me that they really, you know, had a very complex culture. The story I told you just a while ago is just the surface. It, you know, it, it lasts for a long time. Like I said, in the evenings, they would, that's when they would tell these stories. And they would go for a long time with these stories. I, I, left, I left, left out so much, I feel ashamed of myself, right? <laughs> but uh, those stories are very complex. The religion was complex. Those ten, those eight ears came back. Grandmother Spider had created eight bundles. And those, those ears, each one went into a bundle. Then those two shields had a bundle for them. There was ten bundles. And people mistakenly call it ten grandmother bundles. It, it's really a sun boy bundles because the language is difficult. The Kabbalah language is very difficult. And the, 
anthropologists misinterpreted. It's really a sun, it is really Sun Boy bundles. One, one Sun Boy went into a lake in Wyoming, Spear Lake, I think. The other, the other Sun Boy became almost like a superhero among the Kiowa. He gave himself, he gave himself to the Kiowa people. He, and he possesses those 10 bundles. Every year at the Sundance, and we call it the Medicine Lodge, every year at the Sundance, those are taken into the um, inner chamber. The Sundance Lodge faces east, and they come in and they go to the inner, inner chamber. They are opened by the priest and, and prayed over and blessed, closed back up, and, and taken back to the bundle keeper. Um, so it's, it gets very complex. E, and so I could go on and on. I don't want, don't want to do that. But I know that, that probably doesn't answer your question. <laughs> But it's very complex, yeah. 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 I asked this one last time, but you see people wearing red otter t shirts. Could you tell us about red otter? Uh, the, our, our family line is um, Tonemaw, and uh, Tonemaw is <clears throat> red otter, is my great grandfather. Tonemaw is my uh, grandfather. He would have been um, the next federally recognized chief. Uh, after his brother, Apitone, uh died. But Tonemaw, my grandfather's father, is Red Otter. And Red Otter and Long Wolf were the ones that actually went into Texas to raid and also went to war against the United States government. Only Long Wolf was, in, was imprisoned. It, again, complex story. I took the name of Red Otter. It was someone had it, someone outside the family. The Kiowa names, and a lot of the tribes, the names are possessions. I didn't want somebody else outside the tribe having the name Red Otter. They didn't, they didn't had no right to it because of my lineage. I, I asked my brothers, I say brothers, in Kiowa, my brothers are, are cousins. I asked my cousins, and I asked my regular brothers. I, I want to take that name, they say yes, Go, take it, and so I, I took it just to preserve it, or keep it out of, keep it in the family, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's what that's about. Hello, Jay. Hello. Congratulations on all. I have a question that you have gone from two-dimensional art into a three-dimensional interactive, and now what is the evolution for your next chapter? The evolution, the evolution of our next chapter, we have done two of these, and we plan in next month to do a, a third one based on, on some stories and, and paintings I have. Our, our trilogy, our big project, I really want to tell the story about the, the boarding schools. And a lot of people are, are not familiar with, you, with it, and many of you are. And the boarding schools were, oh gosh, it was just... A lot of good things, a lot of bad things, but the main thing is that the idea was to kill the Indian and save the man. And that's that's a, a horrible uh, position to, to build an institution on. However, we do know that the boarding schools were the second war against the Native Americans. It was, and this is documented. It was They said it was cheaper to... Um, um, educate the Indianness out of the people than to kill them. So you go to war, it's very expensive. But to build a school and, and to kill the Indian there and to save the man was much more economically feasible. That was a reasoning behind that. It is, that's documented. Yeah. So really, I want to do that third, I want to do the trilogy telling the story of Native American uh, boarding schools. And um, let's see, is, is my wife here? Does some, sometimes she'll, oh, there she is. Sometimes she gets lost when she tries to go some, go both places. Karen taught in the boarding school. Some of you may have taught in boarding schools. Karen taught in the boarding schools on the Navajo, on the Navajo reservation. So she can share some of her stories uh, with that. And that. That wasn't, I guess it was a long time ago. We're getting old. But anyway, yes, that's what we want to do next is tell that story.
So we'll bring in dancers. Wait. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is a, uh, this is my daughter, Brooke. She's the one that does all the work. <laughs> he just puts his name on it. Um, so also the, on the th trilogy, we'll also have um, dancers, uh, more of a theatrical uh, performance as well. Um, and it will take place in also kind of a trilogy on stage as well. So we'll have actors, dancers, uh, another storyline, a narrator present, um, and everything will be painted like a painting as well. So it's just another step forward um, that where we're taking this initial idea of bringing a painting to life. So, yeah, if that answers. Uh, uh, I just want to remind you that Mary is here, who also helped write this story. Yes, sitting next to my wife is Mary Adair. She was the narrator on the story, and she did help us write that story. Her brother, uh, my nephew, is the original writer of the story. We collaborate on the story, and Mary uh, added a lot to the story, and it is the narrator on that story. And uh, yes, thank you, Mary. <laughs> I think we uh, have one question here in the front row. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes these stories are a family affair. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, they start with Jay's idea, and he is, like he said, uh, sharing for, for all of us the transition uh, that was made. And so uh, our son, who's not here, um, also uh, helped with a lot of the writing of the stories. And then, um, you know, I edit every once in a while. <laughs> and so um, it, it's, it's a, a bad thing. Yeah. Um, Jay, as one of our elders, of course, is keeping the history and traditions alive through us. Because without him, um, without that step in the process, it would be lost. So Jay is doing our tribe and other tribes a great service. Thank you, Jay. Well, thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned how ledger art uh, tells a narrative and a spiritual component. What, can you expound on the spirituality of, of that? The uh, spiritual component of ledger art, as um, uh, Candace Green explains in her book on Silverhorn, is um, the, a lot of the um, warriors would have dreams or hallucinations or uh, spirit quest, and they would see a, see an image, and they would take that image and, of course, maybe put it on their, their shirt, war shirt, that would save them from being harmed, or it would be uh, put on the horse to, to give power to the horse. It's not a new idea. It's been around a while. Um, C Constantine and his men visualized that cross in, in the sky, and then they put it on their war shirt, and they were victorious. So that's what a lot of the native people, men, would do. They'd see that image, put it on their shirt, and they would be invincible until maybe they would be shot in the arm or something, and they say, well, I need to get a new symbol. But that's, that's what the spiritual part is about. Yes, yes. Thank you. For, for this piece, I want to keep, I want to keep that, um, the ethos of, of, the, of the tribe, that, that, looking, that young lady looking to her family. Is that, is that a breakdown in our society today? But she's looking to her family for, uh, to be present, to look for that guidance. To me, that's the spiritualness of it. The spiritualness of it, too, is that it's just the endingness of it. Uh, that's what I feel. And the other stories all also bring that out. So we have the narrative, and I do believe that there's a spiritualness nature of it, the art coming even from the Kiowa tradition. You know, I feel it's part of my DNA to produce that art, the spiritual part. 
The other spiritual part is the story of that young lady, uh, uh, like a debutante, uh, coming out into the community, yeah, realizing her position. That's what I think, yeah. All right, yeah. What? I don't think... Is there anyone else? Okay, we're going to do the performance one more time. We all have new eyes. We all have new information. Um, when it's over, we have a meet the artist in the lobby or throughout the museum and the actress, and also she's available to sign her fabulous CDs. <laughs> and with that, let's watch one sure. more time. Yeah. Reservation debutante. Finally, a few minutes to myself to see how I look without being watched. I look at myself in the mirror from this angle and that. I twist and stretch to see myself from all the directions everyone else will see me. I'm almost ready for the Indian fair. I don't want to act like I'm there just to impress. Not while my mom, aunts, and cousins are watching and not later either when I ride down Main Street on the float. I wonder what those white girls think when they look at themselves in the mirror. Their stylish clothes, the way they pose for pictures like in the glossy magazine ads, their shameless self-confidence. How will I look to the guys that always look at those girls? How will I look to those girls when they see me? Some act like they're jealous. Maybe. Maybe not. But I live in town now. I have nice things to wear. Mom and Dad finally got the BI jobs they wanted. It's good. Yeah, I want to be pretty in my own way. But I'm not going to act like some celebrity. Not like them, no. So thank you guys for coming. I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah.